Hello everyone, this is the last video of the Digital Forensics series which is on formal report writing and presentation. So today's video will be divided into two parts. The first one is writing a good digital forensic report and the uh, uh, second part is on presentation. So first if we look at uh, the digital forensic report writing, so digital forensic investigation reports include all details about that particular investigation from what actions we have performed to why we have performed that particular action and who has performed it. A report writing in digital forensic is actually a skill which is very important to that particular field because every technical detail that we find or we do in that investigation must be explained uh, very clearly in the report in a way that it is understandable by a non-technical person because say that the report is being handed over to a judge in courts or lawyers or police officers so some of them might not be very technical people so it's our uh, responsibility to write the report in very simple terms explaining uh, what has happened and uh, the results that we've got in that particular investigation so here are some of the uh, points that we should follow to make a good uh, digital forensic report the first point is to mention the case number and the details of the investigation so the case number is the actual case number that comes with the court order details of the investigators are the name uh, and the designation of the investigators uh, if this is a private investigation and if it does not have any case number then we can just write the uh, name of the organization and uh, details on that particular uh, investigation second point is to include the techniques procedures and equipment used throughout the investigation so depending on the evidence the device the item and the process that we have to perform on that particular evidence, the techniques and the procedures we use uh, will be different. So we have to write down every single procedure or the technique that we have used to investigate those items. The third one is to include limitations. So limitations mean sometimes when we uh, investigate a particular device or an item, then uh, there are times when there are times when um, we have challenges in investigating it this can be for various reasons uh, for instance one of them uh, can be that uh, we need a particular password of an application or maybe a device and we cannot crack it so uh, we uh, are unable we will be uh, we will not be able to complete that investigation so that can be a challenge and if we face such kind of challenges we have to mention that in the report fourth point is to include uh, results and other discussions this is very important all the uh, results we have got has to be included in a results and answer section and the discussions are uh, places where we have to clearly explain that particular result so that they can understand well. Fifth point is to include all references that we have used. If we have used any external references to support the investigation, then we have to include those references in the report. The sixth point is to include information in table, figures, uh, graphs with proper labeling. Uh, using all those uh, extra uh, tables, figures, graphs is important so that uh, it's more clear but at the same time we have to do the labeling properly. Seventh point is all extra materials used must be shown in the appendix section. When I say all extra material, I mean uh, for instance if there's a chain of custody that is being followed we can include that in the uh, appendix section. This is not compulsory. This can be decided upon the investigation, but any other extra material such as chain of custody or notes on evidences can be attached in the appendix section. 
The eighth point is to pay attention to grammar, spelling, and the report format, especially because we are writing a formal report. The ninth point is to avoid writing personal views on final conclusions of the case because uh, this, is, this is to actually say that uh, any views or opinions that we have on the case must not, not be uh, expressed on the report uh, because that part is actually up to the judge to give the final result and if they have specifically asked um, to express our opinions then we have to base everything on facts so this is a sample report template so you all can use this format for your reports as well next we're gonna talk about presenting as an expert witness in courts so this is actually about presenting our findings uh, expert witness is a person who goes to courts and do the presentation so uh, an expert witness is a person with specialized skill sets and they must also have the specialized knowledge through training, certification, education and also practical experience. During the hearing of the case, the judge might even ask the expert witness to provide independent opinions on those uh, based on those particular findings of the case. It's not like expert witnesses are called to courts all the time. There will be uh, reasons why they are being called. Sometimes it can be because of the case that expert witness have to be present in that particular uh, during the hearing of the court, the hearing of the case. Uh, sometimes maybe the report that the investigator has uh, provided is not clear uh, to the judge or the lawyers, so they want the expert witness to present it in courts. So those are some of the times when an expert witness must be present in court. So this is all for today's video. It was on report writing and presentation and this will be the last video of the digital forensic series. If you all have any questions you all can ask in the uh, comment section in any of the videos of the series. I hope you all have learned something. Thank you.